What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are in the dead of summer. It's like the end of July and it's pretty hot out still. Uh, it's going to be still hot for like the next month before it starts to cool down. I'm going to try and get ahead of the game a little bit with a snow game going on here. We got the 99ZR700 chassis behind us with the 95ZR700 yeah, engine in it. Well, it's been sitting for like over a year and I haven't put the pistons back in it yet because as you saw... Uh, it was the last time, or maybe the winter before. I did. I got the thing running fi good, finally, and um, went through the carburetors. Carburetors were all messed up. Got everything back to stock except for the jetting because it's got the pipes on there. Well, I started hearing this like tanking noise, and so I ended up taking the cylinders off. I measured the pistons, and the pistons actually were worn a little too much. They're SKI pistons, so I'm not sure if that's because of the pistons or whatever was going on. I don't know. Because, I, I mean, I've only put maybe, I don't know, four or 500 miles on it since I put those pistons in. Not much at all. So, either way, I'm going to go ahead and slap them things back in there and get this out of the way. So, if you guys want to stick with me, I really appreciate it. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, though, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back, check out what we got going on. My knee's feeling a lot better now. It's been two months since my motocross wreck, and it's a lot stronger. I've been doing lots of PT, so... I'm uh, just dealing with a little bit of water on my uh, my kneecap there, but not a big deal. So I'm going to be out here doing a lot more videos again. I'm getting caught up. So make sure you like the videos, uh, subscribe, like I said, so you can come on back, check us out here. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram. I'm posting a lot of stuff on Instagram, which also gets posted on my Facebook. So that's fixing, at fixing to ride on Instagram. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so here are the cylinders, the cylinder heads, uh, the pistons. Okay, so these were off by like a crazy amount. I don't mean not a crazy, crazy amount, but enough to where as the piston would come up the top dead center, it would be on one side of the piston and then it would be on one side of the cylinder and then it would rock and I would hear it go tink, tink, tink. So as each one of them would rock through top dead center, I would hear tink, 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 tink at idle. So that's that sound. If you go back to one of my earlier videos on the series, there's a, I believe there's a picture of the engine on the PTO side where the, uh, I think I'm rocking back and forth the primary clutch and you can hear it going tink, tink tink every time i rock it up and then i also go through and i put a pencil through the exhaust and it stops when i push on the piston so that's how i figured out it was, it was the piston so um it wasn't a crank or anything i did get the crank rebuilt anyways and it's got a 33 millimeter uh i think i believe i had them put a 33 millimeter end on there um either way um i went powder coated everything and you know like i said before like that's all in the other videos so now we're gonna go ahead and uh get this top end back in and yeah everything's here when i took it apart uh let's see i did keep track of mag and pto this one's got a little m scratched on the bottom here so i know that's the mag cylinder pto same thing with the heads those are kept in order and then the pistons it's not gonna matter um, I don't honestly, I mean, I, I did keep the rings in order per cylinder and, um, orientation, which was top and bottom for both cylinders. I don't think there's going to be enough wear on these pistons and rings for it to make a difference of which rings I put in which piston. <laughs> At least I hope not. But, you know, there's a lot of like... <sighs> I don't want to call them old wives tales, but there's a lot of theories that were from older machines that, yeah, it was really important because things were a lot sloppier, but now that things are a lot tighter, I, to me, I really don't think it's going to be a big deal at all. I think the most important thing is keeping the rings in per cylinder. That's what the major thing is. And so I've got those in order. These, you know, I kept them with each cylinder as I stored them over here. And then when I took them when I started cleaning up and getting ready for this whole situation, I kept them with the right cylinder. So that's what we're going to do. We got the, uh, all the stuff here to put them back together. I do have to find, I misplaced one of these circlips. Not a big deal. Um, I think it's, I have a bag and I think it's in there. So, um, that's what we're going to do now. So, uh, those are the parts. That's the sled. So currently this is what the condition of the engine compartment is. 
Um, everything looks really good still. Really happy about that. Um, there is quite a bit of oil down there, which I didn't think would happen, but I'm not exactly sure why it's like that either way. But um, I don't think that's that is a newer pump that I got on there too. So I don't think that's leaking. I don't. I mean, I don't know how many people have ever come across that, but. Maybe that's why some of them smoke real bad when you first start them up, because there is t a tiny bit of leakage. I don't know. We'll find out, that's for sure. Uh, but everything's here. Um, it's just a little dusty. I got the pipes sitting over in the corner there. And so, um, yeah, where it shouldn't take too long to get this thing back together, filled up with coolant, and to start it back up. So let's go ahead and get things ready. All right, so you'll notice that these have a arrow on them. The arrow always goes towards the exhaust and then you'll notice opposite from the arrows there are these little uh, pins and those pins lock in the rings because once the rings get tight around them, they fit right around that pin and they stop the rings from spinning so they don't get spun around and caught on the exhaust ports there so we what we want to do is we always want to put your first sir clip you don't want to put them sideways so when they go up and down they could pop out you want to put it straight up or straight down and then you want to pop the inside sir clip in first that way you can install the piston and have room from the outside to push the pin through and get the other sir clip in there and i usually just use a pen to help get these sir clips in there that way there's no um gashes in the piston or anything like that good lord You always want to keep your thumb over this hole too so these circlips don't go flying out oh well there goes that one And then you can even take a screwdriver and put it right in between there and twist either way just to make sure it's in there correctly. Or straighten it out if you need to. There we go. That's not a big deal. All right, and then, so this one is on the inside. So this one will go on the PTO side. And then this one, we got our mark. It's gonna go on the magneto side. So when you're sitting on this little, it'll be on the right. So you want this on the inside. So this is the circle clip we're gonna install. Okay, so we got it in there. Just gonna push it all the way in. All right, let's go ahead and put these rings on. 
Okay, now we got both sets of rings here. So we get the magneto side. Oh wow, that's snug. I like it. All right, so I did stack these rings and you can barely see it. Let's see if I can. All right, so see the R and the N right there? Those go facing up. And this bottom one has the same thing. So when I took them out, I stacked them from top to bottom and then I faced this zip tie upwards so I couldn't so I couldn't, you know, really sit it down level without knowing, okay, this is upwards. So the zip tie facing up is, was pointing the orientation that they go. So all I do is I just stick it in the groove there like that and then just pull it around. like that boom bottom on in again pretty easy all right so I got everything that I need let's go over to the engine compartment and install these pistons all right got my trusty two-stroke oil bearings are already in there so the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of oil to this It's still got plenty of oil in it. Just wanted to get the pin all the way in the bore. Next up, circlip. All right, there's one. Next step, cylinders. First, I'm going to wipe uh, surfaces down. I'm going to wipe surfaces down like this. Just with a little, uh, with a clean rag and a little bit of um, carbon chill cleaner. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom side of the cylinder as far as slip them on. And what I'll do is I'll just stick my finger in the bore of the piss of the wrist pin to line up the bores the holes you 
and get my circlip. Sorry, this isn't the best angle to be able to get these this filmed, so. So I've already oiled the bore of the cylinder here and go ahead and put a little oil. We'll spin both of these rings to where the, the gap is and then you just put a little bit of oil in there, spin it. Now this I've already done the wet install, which is oiling everything and putting it together and then you can start it right up. Well, the dry method, which is what I'll be doing from, from now on with any engine rebuilds for these sleds, is you keep everything dry, completely oil free, and the only thing that you oil is the synthetic, you put synthetic oil on the wrist pin and the bearing up in here and then you put it together and what you do is you pull the engine over with no oil and uh, no spark, no fuel. You're not gonna start it. You're just pulling it over to wear these rings in and what'll happen is they'll wear in better, uh, more efficiently if you pull the engine over like uh, 20, 30 times and then you start it. And typically it's good, You at that point you probably want to put a tiny bit of oil down in the uh, engine on top and then uh, pull it over a couple times before you start it at that point. That'll give you a better, quicker uh, ring seal to the cylinder. Okay, so with these pins, you gotta, or with these uh, rings, you wanna close them real tight around each one of these pins. And you gotta have them lined up in the right spot so when you put the cylinder on, they'll compress fully around those pins. Alright, there's one. Just gonna oil the rings again. Once again, twist the rings into the correct orientation.
that cylinder too. And we'll go ahead and get the washers and nuts on there and torque it down. And these get torqued to 30 foot pounds. Get a flat washer, a lock washer, and then a flange nut. Had one of the oil lines stuck under the back of the cylinder. Oops. It's not the most exciting process, it's kind of tedious, but the end product is awesome. Unlike the old girl popping off for the first time. Got these two back washers and nuts. These are kind of a fun thing to get to because you can't put a socket on them, you gotta put a crow's foot. This is exciting, folks. This is the first sled I ever tore into and fully like rebuilt from the ground up. It's basically got, well, the only thing that's not new are the clutches, but either way, I've gone through everything on this thing, so she's a nice sled. I'll probably have to redo the painting that I did on it and powder coat because there's getting little chips and stuff in the paint. Because paint's just inferior to powder coating. That's all there is to it. Even when I painted this engine before, I painted it that green color. Look nothing like this for one. This looks amazing. Um, but uh, I prepped it the right way and everything. It just I used engine high temp engine paint. It just started like chipping off for some reason like the green paint was popping off of the the primer the high temp engine primer so I don't know if anybody knows a reason behind that but if you do put it in the comments I don't plan on using paint anymore but I'm sure someone does and uh, that information would be valuable to someone that plans on doing only paint for crying out loud this sucking thing don't want to go on just being stubborn got an idea let's get a socket up in there show this thing who's boss right we play no games, so I tell everybody. I ain't playing no games. Ornery, ornery little sucker. So these get torqued in a crisscross pattern like normal. Gotta admit, people, I'm really excited to get back on the bike. That's my new fling. My well, summertime fling. Bounce, boom, bounce. <laughs> right? Summer loving. How about summer fixing? Summer riding? Summer riding, having some fun. <laughs> Gotta make things fun, people. Alright, the last couple sets, last washer here. Once again, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see. This. 
Don Finney has helped me fix that. I know, I don't know what's up, but Don, I got number love for you, brother. Appreciate you. I don't know what I did, but it seems like you're angry at me. But forgive me. Crow's feet, baby. I'll zoom through this real quick. All right, we torque these in three steps, folks. 10, 20, 30. Go ahead and put these carbs in actually right now. I like to put just a tiny little bit of oil on the inside. Helps it slip a little better. And then I'll slip it in between, tuck the big end in, and then make sure it's all the way in there, push it back. Make sure it's clamps on here. And then I'll slip it forward. Boom, just like that. Hi folks, getting excited, how about you? Put it down in the comments, man. You think the noise is gonna be gone? You think this is gonna make, uh, make your dreams come true? Just do it, right? <laughs> we'll see. Probably have to get some compression in there for it to really show its true colors. Let's go and get the heads. All right, so we're putting these gaskets on. All right, baby, come on. Get in your home. Are you too good for your home? We're gonna bring these purdy heads over here. Gonna do it, do it right, folks. All right, I got it. Just stretch this one out a little bit. All right, buddy, this one's for you. <laughs> you know who you are. You gave me crap about not putting. oil on these seals here and these little o-rings so we're gonna use a q-tip with some oil there now they're all oiled so we're gonna start off at Seven. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to do thirteen. One, 
last step, we're going to go to 20. All right, folks. Got to get a hose clamp here. Now we do the top port. It's coming together quick. That's what I love about top ends. Let's get a little blue Loctite. Trusty 242. These are 10 millimeter sockets, and they get torqued to six foot pound. Not a whole lot. All right, that's that. I believe we just got a belt and some exhaust, folks. So I'm gonna clean up, and we'll be back. All right, just got one of these oil lines to secure. And then one on the other side. Which, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm just going to do that one off camera real quick. Alright, just got one clamp. And temp sensor here. We got one on the other side.
All right, first attempt at stir it up. Let's throw a little fuel in the cylinders. Might have to do this a couple times. No damn spark. All right, let's do the jumper trick, see what happens. All right, guys, we're back at it. We're the next day. I think it, I think I got to figure it out. I was jumping the wrong wires on the, um, the stator. So the stator's got four uh, four prong plug and there's a brown and black and then a yellow and the yellow well the yellow and yellow goes to the uh, lighting coil and then the brown and black goes to the ignition coil well i was jumping the yellow one for some stupid reason so i for some reason i was only getting intermittent spark right at the end of the revolutions so when i would pull it as soon as it starts pulling over you should have spark 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 spark, 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 spark. well I, it was going spark 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 Spark, spark, spark. Or more like spark, spark. Spark, spark. When it should be spark, 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 spark. You know, as soon as you pull it over. That's why it would go pa pa pa. Pa pa pa. And so I'm gonna bypass the uh, the four prong plug just to, to see if it's in the handlebars there, which it's probably, that's where it is, or the ignition. So that's what we're gonna do and uh, see what happens. Cause I already tested, I got spark when I jumped these two wires. So I don't even need to turn the key on or anything, so all this is bypass. Yeah. So that means it's up in the switches. So you got your key switch. If you got a, a tether switch, it be the key switch, tether switch, or the start-stop switch. Wouldn't surprise me if it was this. All right, so um, that's good. Started, uh, good to hear that thing again. It sounds awesome. So next thing I'm gonna do, now that I know it's in one of those switches, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the little console off there, which is, I'm gonna pull this console off. And then I'm just going to simply test each one of those. I'm going to test the um, key switch. So I'll take a multimeter, uh, just put it on continuity, and then test to see if the key switch has good continuity. And then I'll wiggle it a little bit to see if it's kind of breaking up. And then if that's good, I'll move on to the, um, the tether. And then I'll plug that in. The tether itself is kind of like broken up on the outside, the rubber part. So, um, I don't know if it's just not holding well, but I'll do the same thing with that. I'll test it for continuity, I'll wiggle that plug a little bit, and then go from there. And if not, if it's not either one of those, which I'm suspecting, the most common thing on these sleds is the emergency stop switch. So I'll do like I did on the 600 last winter, and I'll take that apart, clean it all up, and then I'll use some of that um, conductive carbon grease on there, and then that should solve all the problems. So get it figured out either way. I can walk you through that, that stuff if you want. Um, 
But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera. And then uh, the last thing I'll have to do to this thing is drop it down on the ground and then lift up the front end a couple feet and then um, work out the air bubbles in the coolant system. And then I can go ahead and slap in the trailer and be done with it till winter time. I'm gonna be ripping when the snow comes, so. Uh, yeah, so for now, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking around if you stuck around this long. Uh, these, you know, sometimes the stuff's a, you know, just a process of elimination and, you know, it'll give you attitude here and there, but, you know, that's what it is with the older sleds. But, you know, like I said, I went through this whole thing and it's just working out the little kinks here and there. I think she's just about to the point where she could be reliable. So we'll be able to test it out this, this, uh, this winter. So I'm pretty excited. But thanks a lot for sticking around, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back, check out what we got going on. Like I said before, we're always fixing a ride here. Always got stuff we're doing. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and share the video. Go comment if you guys have any questions. Um, if not, we'll see you guys in the next video. So take care. Um, don't forget to check us out on Instagram. God bless. We'll see you in the next one. All right, guys.